So in this video, I'm going to talk about how you can group return tracks. Yes, I'm talking about return track and not actual tracks. As you know, in Ableton, if you select multiple actual tracks, right click and press on group tracks, you'll be able to group them into a single bucket, basically bussing them into a single bucket. But with return tracks, you can't do that. So if you select multiple, you are not able to do that. So why would you want to group return tracks? If you want a single bus, but if you want a single bus to root all of your sends into one one place so you've got one single place to do a global control this is actually a more efficient way of doing it so for example say you want to reduce the volume of all of your effects at the same time then you could do that in a group track and not have to worry about going into every single one and aligning them and making sure that exactly the same values are taking place or you might want to say side chain a group of tracks against a vocal so they duck when the vocal hits or side chain those return tracks against say a kick and you can do that by grouping them together or you may want to EQ a bunch of return tracks so as you can see here I've got three return tracks I've got a reverb got a delay and I've got an auto filter and because as you can see here reverb is going to a out of the three sends that you have here it is going to send reverb to the first send and it's sending all of it at zero or you can reduce the amount that gets sent and similarly the delay is going to be sent to the vocal so you can see that quite a bit has been sent to the vocal and finally Finally, we have sent some auto filter to the bass as well as a little bit of reverb onto the bass. So the way to group everything together is to right click and create a new return track. Now this return track is coming up as D. So this is the final one here. But what we're going to do is we're going to open up all of these returns and we're going to send everything to D. So D in this case here is the final send now the other thing is because of the way Ableton set up by default if you right click on the sends they're not enabled so you have to enable all sends so let's just do that for all of the tracks so once you've enabled all the sends then you want to send all of these effects to return track and you may want to rename that to group return now the other thing that's going to happen is all of these returns are sending the audio to master so you, what you want to do is select all three and just send them to sends only so this group return is still sending to master but these are only sending their audio to the group return the advantage of doing it that way is if you say for example want to create another reverb return track but you don't want to send it to the group return you just want it to be standalone then you can send that directly to master now let's go ahead and listen to the song just to hear that the effects to work okay now let's solo the return tracks so you can see that the group return track now has all of the effects on them but the other tracks do not because they're all being sent to the group return track so now what we can do for example we can switch on automation and we can say automate the track volume so you might want the effects to decrease as you get towards this break element so let's take a listen now so doing something like that is really useful because you have control of all of your effects in one place. You can hear though that there's still quite a lot of effects clashing against each other. Bring in two things. So you can bring in an EQ, remove all the low end of the delay and reverb. So you've got a much cleaner effect sound. So once again, you're bussing and grouping and you're getting a cleaner effect sound. And then finally, you can use, say, a glue compressor to go in and side chain the vocal. So you want to input a vocal against the glue compressor and then just increase that threshold. I know you can save me, I know you can save me, free burning, oh 